y'all are here to see our guest for tonight, Andrea Pitter Campbell of Pantora Bridal. And so I'm not going to delay because I know y'all want to talk to her. So I'm going to bring Andrea on as you continue to join. So everybody who's joining, go ahead and drop a note. Tell us where you are, if you have a business, business name, what you do so that we can shout you out so that folks can see. You all know that we are all about uh, supporting our sisters in business. And so, hey, girl. Hi. And you? so we uh, we want to be sure to share. Hey, Shereen Tate. Welcome. Hi. Hey. <laughs> so make sure my volume is up. Can you hear me okay? I can. Okay, good, good, good. Um, and everybody, give us a thumbs up. Let us know that you can hear us pretty good. Babe, can you turn off the AC for me? Hi, Jackie. Um, <laughs> So, you're a little low. I'm turning off my AC. I want to make sure it's just not the background noise. How's okay. That? That's good. That's good. That's perfect. So, um, Andrea or Andrea? Oh, we got a little connection issue happening. Okay, I lost you Andrea. for a second. Okay, you're good, fine. good, good. <laughs> I'm back. Huh? You good? You can hear me now? Yeah, you're going in and out, but I can hear you for the most part. Hmm. Okay. We don't want that. I'm going to turn on my Wi-Fi just to see if that helps. Okay. So, again, Andrea, welcome. Welcome. <laughs> on and to be with us tonight i think she's i think you were frozen a little bit you were i'm i moved to a different portion Let's see if it's if it's me i'm like okay i'm like i'm like a stairwell now <laughs> <laughs> oh god okay all right so i was just saying welcome um i was saying that you and and I have been um, connected in a variety of ways, kind of here and there, um, over the last couple of years. Uh, we have a bunch of mutual friends and contacts, and um, I'm just so excited that we're able to connect tonight um, to share and to talk about about you and about your amazing business. So um, thanks again to everybody who's joined us. We're really excited to have Andrea with us, and so I'm going to let you introduce yourself to those who may not know, and tell everybody a little bit about you and what you do. So my name is Andrea Peter Campbell. I am the founder and designer and owner of Pantora Inc., which houses Pantora Bridal and Pantora Mini, amongst other things. But I, I guess I don't mm -hmm. know so deep into that. <laughs> So, so tell everybody how Pantora came to be, um, and what was your your vision or your motivation behind the brand. So I actually created the name Pantora when I was 12. Wow. Um, I was in junior high school, and I decided that I wanted to be a fashion designer. And um, I wanted to go to a school called the High School of Fashion Industries. And we were, we were required to do a portfolio. And instead of just creating a portfolio, I wanted to create a brand. Little did I know that, like, fast forward maybe four years later, I started my business at 16. And I just kept the name Pantora. And it has grown to what it is today. <laughs> so you actually started the business at 16 i did i started with um like special occasion my first order was like sweet 16 like the court you know there's eight mm -hmm. girls eight boys i did dresses for eight girls yeah. wow so did you actually learn to sew in high school or were you sewing before then i taught myself how to sew in junior high um uh -huh. and i was trained in high school by some pretty amazing teachers who I still speak to today. So teacher, treat your yeah. teachers well, guys. I love my <laughs> teachers. Um, uh, yeah, I'm classically trained and self-taught at uh -huh. the same time. I went to FIT. And so... <laughs> uh -huh. So you got the goods. You got the goods. <laughs> so so um, let's talk a little bit about this journey, right, from being a... Uh, a junior high school student, you know, with a dream and then actually having a business at just 16 years old to this amazing brand that you've built over the years that has now reached, you know, so many and, and received such acclaim. Um, what do you attribute to that? 
um, to that to that journey and, and the success you've had over over the time. Uh, it's funny because I I think that I've been thinking about that more recently, and I think a big part of it is it stopped being about me a long time ago, uh -huh. and uh -huh. it's more about like what it's become. There's I cannot think of a time where I thought that it would be this, and while I think it's great and there's so much further we can go. I kind of was one of those people who just worked and worked and worked. Small goals, not anything huge. And then I turn around and then there's this business that represents so many and that people literally run to as a, you know, a safe place. So uh -huh. I definitely did not create Pantor with the vision that there is today. Uh -huh. So how did you, we, we said you were trained and um, in terms of the actual design and sewing, but how did you learn how to run a business and how I'm to still learning? <laughs> still learning. I'm still learning. Um, it's so interesting because this is I'm 14 years in. Mm. Um, it's building off of bad habits, right? You're fixing bad habits because I, I started my business at 16 years old. You don't know anything about business. While we have come so far, there's always so much more to do. I'm constantly mm -hmm. um, talking to my team about what customer service looks like, um, not just to everyone else, but what it looks like to Black women and how we generally do not receive the type of customer service that the world is used to. And mm -hmm. we've had trips where we go to Tiffany's and see what customer service looks like at a different scale. And the hardest part about running a business and like maintaining is finances. It's mm -hmm. hiring, it's, you know, budgeting, <laughs> it's mm -hmm. giving the customer what they want and what they need. And sometimes that's a really fine line. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's, sometimes it's, they don't know. Nope. It's literally mm -hmm. making hard decisions every single day. And I generally um, like to operate with the best of intentions because I feel like intentions get you further than the work does. Mm -hmm. And Every single um, staff member that I have, I ha I've hired them because I personally like them. And I feel mm. like they have great intentions. And so when things fail or when things don't go the way that we want them to go, the intentions were there. And I feel like mm. it takes, like, to, to run the type of business that I want to run. I want to run it with people who have the best of intentions. Mm -hmm. And I think that's probably what got me this far is just humbly doing the work. <laughs> Uh -huh. So why bridal? Um, I'm sure that you, I know you do other, um, you know, styles and genres, but of course your niche is bridal. How did you land there? And, and what has been the experience as a woman of color in that industry? Um, I love details. Mm -hmm. I love details. Um, and in this part of the industry, we just lack representation. That's probably what kept me here because I can do details in in evening wear. I don't do evening wear right now. I do evening wear when I want to. That's the joy mm -hmm. of that's the joy of running your own business. You do what you want. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I love details. I've always loved details. I love construction. That's what got me into the industry. I actually um when I was twelve I was modeling and I was modeling for different designers and every time I would either get on a runway or do a photo shoot, I wanted to be where the designers were. I wanted to take apart the clothing. I wanted to see the inside. I wanted to construct. And that's kind of why I'm still in it. I love details. I love beading. I love boning. I love corsetry. I love lace. And I love like vintage details and seeing like how garments once were made and how they're made today. So that's pretty much why I'm in bridal. But what keeps me in is the like the love stories. I love the fact that people choose us to be a part of their love story. Um, that's beautiful. So you recently had your own love story. <laughs> yes. <laughs> And um, just celebrated one year, right? No. I'm of married? No, I'm three. I'm almost three years in. Has it been that long? Yes, it has been. What? How about my sisters in the back talk about, I told you? Because <laughs> I was telling her, I was like, yeah, I think she got married like a year ago. <laughs> no, I'm almost three years in. It'll be three years in September. But I just had a baby a year ago. So that's a I, that, Okay. I mean, I know that. Uh, I'm all messed up because time is flying. I don't know how this is possible. It really moves way too fast. Like everything is just like zooming past me. Wow. <laughs> well, nevertheless, um, being that you are now a wife and a mom, how has that impacted 
uh, your business and what do you say to all the, the wives and or moms out there who are trying to figure it out as entrepreneurs? So I feel like it's it's been done. I think that's the hardest thing because I'm probably like a tough critic. Women, we, we want a lot of um, grace and I think we deserve it. Mm -hmm. I think, um, but I always say this is not something that I'm, I'm not revolutionizing anything. So working hard while, you know, having a family is not, it's not new. It's just new to me. Um, mm -hmm. But I think that the same grace that we deserve, we need to give it to ourselves as well. Um, mm -hmm. Slow down, take the time to be with your family. I actually started to put it in my calendar. Like I'm going to be with my child. And I'm going to spend actually actual quality time with my baby. Mm -hmm. I'm going to spend mm -hmm. quality time with my husband. We are all three going to be together mm -hmm. from this time to this time. And mm -hmm. I, I, it's working for right now. But when I was like brand new in the, you know, the husband wife dynamic didn't change as much. But once we introduced a baby to the mix, it was really different because I, I felt like I had something to prove. And that probably mm -hmm. could have been you know, to my detriment. I had a C-section. I went back to work within the, the seven days of coming home. Um, and I was just like, bad idea, bad call. Okay. But uh, Kenny has been a blessing and he's forced me to slow down and to ask myself how much of this is worth it. <laughs> and I'm just like, it's not worth it if I can't enjoy life, right? So right. I've slowed down the way that I do things and I've hired um, more people. Uh, my expectations of people have changed. I probably look at things way differently because I was, I was on such a grind. I feel like I still am, but I just operate uh, more sympathetically. I think before it was just like um, work, 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 work. And I'm like work and not stop to smell the roses. Like that's um, not the way to live. <laughs> right, right. And I think we really need to be conscious about, you know, the type of, the type of, um, time spent on just our dreams because we, mm -hmm. we don't often live in the moment and I was missing a lot of moments because I wasn't I wasn't just around I was just working it was all going mm -hmm. past me and then you know we're three years in almost in marriage and I'm just like oh mm -hmm. <laughs> how mm -hmm. much of that did I actually like take in right so I've been slowing down a lot more lately that's awesome that's awesome when did you know that you had it when did you know that you were really on to something? And I know you're humble and, and we all are, but at some point, at, at some point we kind of like, okay, I'm on to something, right? Like this is worth the time and the investment. I'm good at what I do. When did you realize that? So that's the part that I probably am not too humble about, right? <laughs> good, good. And I only say that because um, I've always said that I can bet on myself since I was a child. Like you tell me I can't do it, I will. I will be able to do it 10 times. And mm -hmm. so I, I will just bet on myself time and time again. But when I realized I was on to something, maybe my second year of having the store, the store has been open for three, um, six years, almost six years. And wow. I think it maybe it was year two. And people were coming to give me money. <laughs> and I wasn't mm -hmm. begging for it. <laughs> Mm -hmm. I wasn't, I wasn't, people were coming to ask to buy dresses and I wasn't asking people to come and buy dresses. And I think that was mm -hmm. the difference when I said we are onto something. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I think I really realized when I hired my best friend, she was working for me for free. And mm -hmm. um, she, one of my like biggest supporters. And one day I was mm -hmm. like, can you like actually work for me? Like, I will pay you. Like, I have money to pay you. And I was mm -hmm. like, wait, I can hire. And I think I that was around... In between year one and year two, when I was just like, wait, I can write a check. It was like a balance. What a blessing, right? <laughs> right? What are you, what are uh, some of the biggest mistakes that you think people make when they first start out that you possibly made yourself or you wish you had known? Um, they quit their jobs way too fast. I think some people, mm -hmm. like, they just put all their eggs in one basket. And like I said, I bet on myself a whole lot. But I also have said that I have built a business on very bad habits that I've been you know correcting for 14 years and so while we're at a point where i probably let go of most of the bad habits like they were still built on those very same bad habits that a 16 year old you know started a business with mm -hmm. um so sometimes it's like not doing research research mm -hmm. who are you selling to because it's not your family and if you are mm -hmm. if your family is the only source of income and you're banking on your family for your business to thrive it will not mm -hmm. it will not they can't be your only customer. Right. And right. 
I think it's, you know, not testing the market and either buying too much product or over investing in something that you have not researched. I think everybody has great ideas, but execution is super, super, super important. And I think um, it's, um, I think I love the phrase, um, the, the is it the long road? <laughs> it's basically when you're thinking about the end result and not just like living in the moment, like how often do we say this is what we want 10 years from now and do the work to achieve that versus like, okay, this is in at an instant, this is what I can get today, but how deeply will it actually impact your business? I know I've made some really bad decisions, right? I've also made some really good ones, mm -hmm. but so many of us are just making bad decision after bad decision for temporary satisfaction. It's like mm. almost like buying the followers. Oh, you mm. bought followers and now you, you have 10,000 followers who won't like your pictures. Mm. We all know. We can all tell. Right. Yeah. And then mm -hmm. when you know Instagram does its clean sweep, you're back at 100 followers. It's like mm. you, sp you spent all that money for them to take all those followers away and for us to notice mm. that you purchased them. So it's really like doing, doing that investigative work, um, knowing when to outsource. <laughs> I think we mm. try to do so much of it ourselves. And mm -hmm. I think to a degree you should make attempts to do a lot of it yourself until you can actually afford to outsource. But I think you need to know when you're not good at it. Like I'm not, I'm not really a salesperson. I'm a great designer. I'm not a salesperson. I don't do the consultations anymore. And mm -hmm. I think that was very wise of me because I'm a designer and I'm sensitive about my stuff. <laughs> so I don't need to be, <laughs> right. I don't need to be on the sales floor. Um, <laughs> I've hired people who are great at being on the sales floor and still embody what it is that Pantora is about, you know, creating a safe space for women to come and shop for their wedding dresses, whether, you know, they have cultural setbacks or religious setbacks or whatever, whatever the case is, they are comfortable mm -hmm. coming into Pantora and the girls can sell to them without being sales, salesy. Um, mm -hmm. I've, I've, I have an HR team. I don't do human resources. I don't want to. Um, uh -huh. It's it's really knowing when to hire and when to be relative, when to be subjective. I think that so many of us are so stuck on our good idea that we don't execute. Um, I think it was Yvonne Orji. I was at the um, My Taught You retreat a couple weeks ago, uh -huh. and I think uh -huh. um, it was either Yvonne or my league, but they said sometimes well done is better than done perfect. Some of us don't know mm -hmm. when to start. And we we harbor on the idea of perfection so often that we just don't ever do it. Right. So it's the part of doing it that, you know, sets us back often. Um, and some of us just don't know when to get a mentor. Mm -hmm. <laughs> get a mentor. Uh -huh. Get someone who's willing to tell you the truth. Because <laughs> mm -hmm. we That's have a lot stuff. of yes ones in our circle. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you mentioned that you made a lot of bad choices. What would have been some of the toughest lessons you've had to learn or biggest mistakes you've made? All money is not good money. Mm. You know, sometimes you want the sale so bad or, you know, that sale you feel like will pay your rent or will pay, mm -hmm. make sure you get paid for the week. And then you go, but what did I sell in order to make that sale? If it was a piece mm -hmm. of your soul, it's not good. Mm -hmm. um, or, or your peace of mind yeah peace of mind <laughs> peace of mind <laughs> there i mean it's a little different you know now we have hundreds of clients walking through our door you know mm -hmm. yearly like probably thousands perhaps and it's um mm -hmm. it's different because you don't get to screen the clients the way i once mm -hmm. was able to screen them five years right. ago i don't do any of the screening, right. screening. some of the, of the times i don't even meet the clients so mm -hmm. You know, you get you get people who it's just like maybe this wasn't for you, this journey. Mm -hmm. Because we have a particular mm -hmm. way we do our business and every just I should throw that out there. You want everyone to like you, they will not. Mm -hmm. You have to be okay with that. I yeah. think my piece is way too expensive. Because <laughs> mm -hmm. if it costs you your piece, it costs too much. Too That's right. And and at one point, I was just like, this doesn't make sense. I don't want to do this anymore if it makes me so unhappy. Uh -huh. You know, there are some people who will not like the way you run your business. And I think that is okay. Uh -huh. Like, it is okay. It's okay. <laughs> but I also think you need right. to, I think you need to um, take the meat and leave the bones kind mm. of a scenario. Because even in the harshest of reviews or critiques, um, there's something to be learned from it. 
So uh -huh. we've had people who go, you guys don't answer your phone enough. I was just like, you know, I've heard that one too many times. We need to hire somebody to make sure they buy the phone. You know, uh -huh. their delivery uh -huh. was whack and everything else they, they could have said was probably trash. But they said one good thing uh -huh. that made, that gave right. me a pause that said maybe we should implement that. And I think so sometimes you got to get out your own way. Uh -huh. um, I've stood in my way a yeah, lot. And be, yeah, and be open to, to receiving you know, criticism or constructive ideas or things like that. Because um, like you said, sometimes the package is so messy, we don't want to receive anything that's inside of it. Ooh, um, but the value, it. the value, the value. The value is yeah. too messy that you don't want to even receive mm -hmm. it. That's because right. That's right. And it's not all coming sugar-coated. It just, that's not how mm -hmm. this is set up to go. And I think, um, you know, sensitivity does not help, like, in business, like, being way too... Because sometimes it's not personal. It's just business. Mm -hmm. Just business, yeah. I'm going to You mentioned your story. <laughs> 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 write it down, girl. We, we end this together. So you mentioned that um, your store has been open six years. And for in today's world and economy, for a storefront to be open for that long, um, particularly owned by a woman of color is is not very common. Um, a lot of people kind of struggle with whether or not to open a storefront, when to open one, and, and, and keeping it open. Do you have any um, specific tips or just, you know, insight on actually running an actual store um, and what that has been like and how you've been able to, to keep it open? I want to yell, but my baby is sleeping. If you cannot afford it, do not do it. You do not have mm -hmm. to do it for other people. I mm -hmm. have so many friends and associates who they either want to open a store or they have, and their reasoning behind it is just bad. Like, they're, it's just not a good idea. If your type of business does not need or support a storefront, don't do it. If your sales prior to opening a store cannot expense you a storefront, don't do it. Um, or at bare minimum, do the type of research that allows you to kind of really, not necessarily predict because you can't predict good or bad business, but do the type of research that you know your overhead is covered, that there will be some mm -hmm. Understand that profit is not going to happen in the first year. And uh -huh. if, you, if you make profit, you are an anomaly. So mm -hmm. profit does it does not kick in in the first year. Lucky if it kicks in in the second year. Most businesses mm -hmm. are closed by year three. Mm -hmm. So if you're running into this, you really need to understand what businesses look like. There are there's rent, there's insurance, there's um, insurance for your team, um, there's taxes. The important taxes mm -hmm. take a good thirty to forty percent of whatever money comes through your door. Mm -hmm. So you need to know how to pay for everything else <laughs> with the rest. Mm -hmm. um, it's really, it, I, most of it is managing, is managing your money really well. But mm -hmm. also like, be honest with yourself about responsibility. If you are someone who does not pay your bills on time, you don't need to open a store. Or at bare minimum, you need to hire someone who, who does that portion of your business. But that's just mm -hmm. an added expense. So storefronts mm -hmm. are tricky. I don't suggest people run into a storefront type of business unless your business is the type that needs, you know, a brick and mortar, unless it's a restaurant or like if your business can um, sustain itself online, ask yourself if you want to, you know, take on an extra three to $15,000 per month, you know, mm -hmm. of expenses. And that wasn't including payroll. <laughs> you know, so, right. like ask yourself the hard questions and not just oh I, I'm betting on myself I believe I can do it but like can you actually sustain like mm -hmm. really and truly did you write the numbers down did you add it up did you mm -hmm. say I can, I can make this much and more because I still need to leave, live I don't just want to I don't want to make money just to give it back to my landlords or you know to mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. these are real questions and a lot of entrepreneurs don't ask themselves can they sustain Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. how did you decide on where to have your your store um you're in brooklyn and uh i'm from brooklyn flatbush uh right in the neighborhood even though they probably gave it a different name by now i think you're right in the crown Heights. they it, it was crown heights i don't know what they call it now probably prospect something gardens <laughs> I'm, but i'm a um, crown heights native native <laughs> <laughs> So was what, did, did was that a part of the decision making process as well? 
my pocketbook determined what store I moved into. <laughs> I um, didn't have any money to be open in the store. And really and truly, when I go back and think about it, I go, wow, you were gutsy, you were ballsy. There was something about me when I was 23, year old, 23 years old that I do not have today. I'll just tell you. So that. you think if it, if it was today, you might not, <laughs> you might have took, taken a second thought. <laughs> I would, I would would have been one of those people trying to sell wedding dresses on the internet that I like go, am completely against. Like, do not right. sell wedding dresses on the internet. Um, um, but I would have been one of those people probably. But um, I, I, you know, I leaked out on faith, and I, I also think that's important. I'm a walking contradiction, okay? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Why I think I think that's important is like you know leaping out on faith. I also think that there's a certain amount of math you need to do. Mm -hmm. There's always a possibility that you'll fail. There's always a possibility that you'll win. Mm -hmm. And while I do really good math and I, I can bet on myself, I knew that the odds, like the odds were in my favor because mm -hmm. I'm, when passion fails, my work ethic will kick in. I work harder than the average. I was, I was clocking in when I first opened my store, I was clocking in 12 to 18 hours every single day. What I did mm -hmm. was go to sleep to wake up to work, go to sleep, wake up, work. It was, non-stop repeat you have to ask yourself do you have that uh -huh. i don't have that anymore <laughs> uh -huh. i still right. grind but i've slowed down and i'm not i'm not 23 anymore so these this body feels it <laughs> this body feels it. it'll, it'll let you know for sure it sure will <laughs> girl sure. So, you know those moments where you've worked a hard day and you sit on the couch and you're like just i'm just gonna stay here Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, won't I can't do nothing else. <laughs> no, I, I got nothing. I got nothing. I don't. Mm -hmm. I don't have the energy to even eat. You know, mm -hmm. I, I've experienced so many different types of struggle or hustle. When I was mm -hmm. in um, high school and college, when when I was in college, I was working full time for myself. I was clocking in eight Pantora hours every day. I had an internship mm -hmm. that I went to four days a week. I was enrolled in school full time, and I was working as a teacher after school. Mm. I don't know how I did that because I, I don't know mm -hmm. that my body could do that today. Right. But I'm not hustling backwards. So, <laughs> you know, right. my, my body can't do that today. My money can. So I pay people. Mm -hmm. <laughs> who that's right. That's, that's why we do it when we're young, ideally, so that when we get a little older, we don't have to. Exactly. Um, so I feel you. I definitely feel you. So to anyone who, who might just be joining us, uh, I'm Aisha Taylor Issa, founder and CEO of the Sisters in Business Expo, and we are chatting tonight on our Founders Chat with Andrea Fitter Campbell of Pantora Bridal, Pantora Mini, um, and tell everybody about your new brand. I, I have so much things going on. So I recently <laughs> launched an online store with my sister. It's called Road Darcy. Um, it's an online boutique. And it's just fun. It's about um, fashion and finance. We give you tips on how to spend your money and live the life that you want while being responsible. Um, um, and I also recently launched Trap Fabrics. I'm so excited about that. I didn't know about Trap Fabrics. You've been holding out. <laughs> we just we launched last weekend. I'm super excited about that. Um, okay. It's my element. I love fabric shopping. It's one of my favorite pastimes. It's what I, I can get lost in the garment district or in the fabric store. Every time I leave the country, which is fairly often, I always like schedule in some time where I can find where they sell fabric. And it could literally be nothing too special, but I just want to go and see what the world has to offer. Um, uh -huh. So I, we launched the online fabric. So we're going to actually open a um, brick and mortar soon. But it's wow. online. It's super cool. It's going to be a designer's destination. Um, I was inspired to do this particular project because when I once when I was like 18, even now actually, they still do this to me every now and then, but not as often as it once happened. I would go fabric shopping and ask them, how much is this? And they would go expensive. And I'm like, I asked how much? It's not a cost, <laughs> right. And super put off, right? But I still had to buy yeah. the fabric. So I had to buy it there. Uh -huh. And it's like, that's uh -huh. unfortunate. Because uh -huh. I don't want to give people my money that treat me that way. But, right. Um, so I, I launched this particular business because I wanted to see designers who look like me be able to shop comfortably and uh -huh. you know, have the type of support that I feel like I didn't have. And uh -huh. so there's going to be resources. We're going to have lots of designer resources. Um, 
there's the fabric store already exists. We're going to have a designer's portal where other people wow. can come and find a designer that fits their needs. So I'm like just super uh -huh. excited. I'm all about the arts. I'm always into creative stuff. So I, I can't wait to see how this one blossoms out. Yay. Well, we are so excited. Um, so if anybody has any questions for Andrea, um, you can go ahead and drop them in. We um, have a few minutes. We would love to get to your questions. Uh, we have a very large um, fashion uh, community that's a part of the Sisters in Business Expo. Um, so many sisters are into um, clothing and online boutiques, and um, we have some designers. We have a lot of um, African print designers who've been with us, um, and so they they often you know are looking for you know just resources and mentors and and ideas. So I think that you know this chat is really going to help them and um and inspire them right that you can make it you can go beyond um just a dream um and really turn it into something fabulous and amazing um av fashion 7878 is asking how long have you been in business um she maybe joined us a little bit late you can tell her so I actually started my business when I was 16. So that makes it 14 years. But I opened Pantora Bridal, the store, six years ago. And um, we're currently, we currently actually have two stores, Pantora Mini and Pantora Bridal. But we're carried in five stores across the country. Nice. Uh, Tep on Insta asks, what inspires your bridal design? Women of color right now is my biggest inspiration. I am designing for women with hips and curves or um you know a different place in their spirituality like i'm designing for the woman who goes to stores and they are uncomfortable shopping because the people who are servicing them do not understand who they are and what they represent so right now i'm like just inspired by black women like you have no idea like when women come into my store I just get so excited even though i'm not the one doing the consultations i'm like an air hustler i'm always listening to what's going on I'm listening um, to how mom is giving a whole lot of sass because she doesn't want a little <laughs> cleavage to be shown. Um, but daughter is just like, you better catch this cleavage. Like, so, uh -huh, so like, uh -huh. I, I'm just super excited about um, just, you know, servicing women of color. Uh -huh. Awesome, awesome. Um, Investigative is asking, how do you keep going when you have had a setback? I actually, I, so... I, this is, I guess, a two-part answer. Previously, okay. before I had a team, I just, I liked to work. So despite the fact that I had a setback, like, I didn't know what my days looked like without going, like, without being the Energizer Bunny. And so I didn't want to know what those days looked like. Just, I don't like the surprise. Mm -hmm. But I knew I was, I, I like to hustle. I knew I like to work. So the setback literally set me back for two seconds. And I was just like, get back on because you like the feeling of accomplishing something. You like the feeling of creating. And so those little setbacks, like they, they didn't mean that much to me. But now I have mouths to feed. <laughs> uh -huh. I, I am responsible for a team of any, anywhere between eight and 15. So, wow. you know, the fact that, I, I think I've said it earlier in this conversation, mm -hmm. my business is not really about me anymore. I could, mm -hmm. Do it smaller scale and it could just be me and another person and i probably mm -hmm. personally would make the same amount of money if not more um mm -hmm. but it's not about me anymore like i've created mm -hmm. something that other people believe in the fact that my staff they come to work and they believe in what it is that we do it get it gets me excited they come with ideas they're like andrew we should do this i have an idea like and it just those little setbacks is a slap in the face to everybody who believes in what we do Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Awesome. Um, AV Fashion, um, your question uh, about tips for an entrepreneur. Um, Andrea gave a bunch of great ones, so I encourage you to go back um, and check out the replay of this. Of course, it will be here on IG for 24 hours, but we also will upload it to our YouTube channel. Uh, so be sure to check it out. She gave a lot of good nuggets. Um, if anybody else has any questions, you can feel free to post them. Um, while we wait for those, um, tell everybody, like, what's coming up or what they can look for. So I know you mentioned um, the trap fashion, uh, trap fabrics, um, anything else coming down the line um, and how can they find you? So we're actually going to be releasing our tour calendar. We always go on tour. Mm -hmm. well, we've been going on tour mm -hmm. for the last two years. So we're going to be releasing okay. the tour calendar um, 
in the next two months so you'll know what states okay. we're visiting nice. you'll know what, what stores we're in um and what events we're going to be having at the store so my mm -hmm. store manager actually just updated me on that so calendar is coming soon um new collection will come out in october as it always does uh, I'm trying to think of what's super, super exciting. We're always dropping new things. Um, um, we have new hires. So there's new girls at the Pantora store and we'll be introducing them too soon. So I'm super excited about that. I love, I love hiring mm -hmm. people. So it's like my mm -hmm. favorite thing. You don't get a check, you don't get a check. Everybody gets a check. Right. <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a beautiful place to be in. It, it's weighty and it's scary, but the, the ability to be able to do that, um, to provide livelihood for someone, I think is, especially as a woman of color, um, is something that we can't take for granted, especially when we watch our parents work so hard for other people. You know what I mean? To be able to give that to someone is really a blessing. Yeah. So I feel you on that. Um, what was I going to ask you? Uh, oh, do you have a dream client or a dream experience? Like just someone that if they called you and were like, Andrea, can you desire for me? You might like fall out or something. <laughs> Okay, so I have two. So obviously, okay. everybody's dream client is Beyonce, but I just... I just want to like smell her. <laughs> Beyonce's amazing. No, but um, besides Beyonce, and I think really and truly, like I just admire Beyonce because what she does in 24 hours compared to what the rest mm. of us are doing, like I'm <laughs> mind blown. But besides uh -huh. that, Michelle Obama. Mm. Like, I would love to dress Michelle Obama. Like, are they having a power renewal anytime soon? Right. <laughs> I would love Girl, to put it in the atmosphere. Right? But really and truly, like, my dream clients, like, they come, my dream clients come in the store every day. Like, mm -hmm. I, I know that, like, sounds super cheesy, but I have some brides who are just so dope. We have quite a few brides this year that just, was just like, this is my budget. Tell Andrea to design me something. Mm. And they That's didn't see what their dress was going to look like until they walked through the door. The, it, wow. That is trust that is faith in our brand and what we do. Mm -hmm. Those are those are the type of brides that I wish we had more of. But, mm -hmm. you know, 99% of my brides are amazing and the other 1%, they're just they're just confused. So <laughs> <laughs> they're equally amazing they're just probably in a different point in wedding planning where they're just stressed out and mm -hmm. i get it i get mm -hmm. it i get it I, I i have stressed differently so mm -hmm. but like pantor brides are dope all pantor brides are amazing mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and if they wasn't amazing by the time you get done with them honey they are amazing oh, cool. because <laughs> the masterpieces that you create are just breathtaking i just love looking and viewing and being amazed at what you do um i really can honestly say i i've never seen anything like what you create and Thank so you. um i love your work i've been a big fan um, and I'm so excited about what God has done and continues to do. And I just look forward to, to being a fan and watching him do even greater things um, in, in your life for you and your family. So thank you so much for being with us tonight. Um, we really thank appreciate it. Of course, of course. And um, you, you, will, you are part of the Sisters in Business family now. So we'll be calling on you. Um, I told you I'll be tapping into you for next year's tour. So you guys can look out for um, Andrea, how we'll be able to partner together next year. But we, we really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Oh, Tev is asking, where can they buy Pantora? Okay, ready? Where's it located? Pantora mm -hmm. Bridal, the showroom, is located at 410 Nostrand Avenue. Pantora Mini is located at 300 Albany Avenue. Pantora Mini is also located online at PantoraMini.com. You can also schedule appointments with our retailers um, in Nashville, Tennessee, Houston, Texas, um, New Orleans, Louisiana, and Durham, North Carolina. And a few more will mm -hmm. be added to that list at the end of the month. Mm -hmm. And what's the website? PantoraBridal.com. Yeah. Prentorbridal.com. Um, I'm sure when you go there, because I took a look at it actually earlier, you'll get all of those details, all those links. Um, so check it out. It's a beautiful site. The first image that comes up is just like breathtaking. It blows you completely away. Um, so thank you. Thank you so much uh, for being with us tonight. And uh, we wish you the best. Just a few. Um, if, you, if you need to run or not, you can go. I'm just going to make a couple of announcements. Um, you want to say bye to the people? 
Bye. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Let's talk to you soon. Okay. Um, so thank you everybody for joining us. We have a couple of things coming up that we just want to make sure you're aware of in Sisters in Business Land. Um to next week. Next week, uh January 13th, we have our next master class for the Sisters in Business University, uh, which is uh entitled Legally Sound Um Expert Tips for Your Business. Did I say January? Oh, June. Thank you, honey. June, June 13th, Tuesday, right? No, Thursday. I'm tired. Tefra, help me. Thursday, June 13th. <laughs> Legally sound. Um, legal tips for building and protecting your business. So many times we uh, start a business, we don't know about the different formation types, about trademarking, about contracts, about the various forms we need. Um, we have an amazing expert who is going to be leading a webinar for us on the 13th, uh, Sydney Mack of Sid Mac Law. Uh, she is a small business legal expert and she is going to be sharing some invaluable inspiration. Thank you, Tev, on Thursday, June 13th uh, at 7.30 p.m. Uh, this is a live webinar. Uh, you do not want to miss it, but you must register to attend. Um, the cost is extremely low. It's only $29.97 uh, for this information that just set up for a consultation. You probably have to pay $500 to get. So um, we encourage you to invest in your business um, by getting the information that you need to protect your brand. Um, we've seen so many issues coming up with others uh, stealing our branding, not our per se, but you know the branding of other uh, businesses of color, logos, and things like that. So you really need to make sure that your brand is trademarked that you have the right type of formation for your business, whether it's LLC, S Corp, C Corp, et cetera, um, and that you have the right contracts in place and things like that. So we encourage you to take part in this live webinar. If you are not able to be there for the live webinar, if you register in advance, you can, uh, you will be sent the replay. So we encourage you to register. Uh, you can register today right on our website or uh, with the link in our bio uh, for the uh, SIB University Masterclass entitled Legally Sound, uh, getting uh, legal advice and tips uh, to help protect and grow your business. Uh, so that's coming up on uh, June 13th. Then, of course, we are just a little over a month away from our next tour stop of 2019, the Sisters in Business Expo Philly. Uh, it's happening on July 13th uh, from 10 a.m. to 7 p.m. at the uh, Grand Ballroom Philadelphia. We have a dope, dope lineup happening. Um, Tamika Mallory is our keynote speaker. Um, we also, I'm going to just go ahead and tell y'all because y'all on here. Uh, we didn't even post it yet, but it's going to get posted soon. But I'm going to just tell you, we also have confirmed another keynote speaker, Yandy Smith, uh, will be joining us on uh, the Philly stop of the Sisters in Business Expo. So we're so excited to have these two amazing sisters in business um, who are both activists and powerful women in business uh, to be sharing with us on uh, Thursday, I mean, on Saturday, July 13th in Philly. So. Yes, Tev, breaking news. I couldn't wait. I couldn't wait. I just had to tell somebody. And, and and actually, in Philly, they're already promoting it on the radio, so we might as well just tell the people. Um, so, yes, Tamika Mallory, Yandy Smith, plus the Authorpreneur panel. We've got some dope panelists on the Superpower panel as well. Our media partner, uh, Radio One Philly, uh, is going to be in the building, and they are huge supporters and partners of us. Uh, if you are interested, we just have just a few vendor spaces left. Most categories are full, but if you are interested, um, please visit the website or the link in the bio for the vendor information. We do have